What's up, YouTube? It's your boy JB, and we are here today with a review for Love at the Lockup Season 3, Episode 40. The episode is titled The Halfway Handoff. Why was the name that? The Halfway Handoff. Alright, you guys. Um, before we get into the video, if you guys are watching this video, any other video on the channel, not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell button, hitting all the buttons on the channel. Stop taking me out on a date and making me pay for it at the end of it. So, without further ado, let's talk about the episode. All right, you guys, so first up, let's talk about Mr. Stan and Lisa. So, we remember last week's episode, Stan and Lisa, he told her she was not a good mother, right? And remember, she left. So, the next morning, you know, she's still upset about it. And she's still worried about her son, and she's talking about the fact that, um, what did she say? What did she say? Oh, she's trying to be a better mom. I don't know how. But okay, Lisa, go off. So then his friend pulled up on him, you know, Stan's friend pulled up on him, and, you know, he tells him what happened, and, you know, he tells her about her son, and that, you know, um, him saying that she's not a good mother, and now he wants to take him back. So his friend was like, you should call her and apologize to her. So then um, we see Lisa, and Lisa goes over to her friend Haley to get her hair done. Ooh. The weave was a mess. Like, I was looking at that one when she was putting it, and I'm like, um, I know Lisa don't have that much hair, but damn. What are you doing to her hair? It looks, it looks worse than before. I didn't think it was possible. Actually, I noticed that in her interview look with the producers, it's the same hair. And it actually looks worse than that goddamn wig she had on. That's damn bald her. I would have preferred her with the glass wig. So then, um, you know, Stan, you know, because his friend told her to reach out to, told him to reach out to Lisa. He called Lisa. He's apologetic to Lisa. And he said that he wants to do it over if Lisa gives him a second chance, the only reason why she's giving him a second chance is because she wants more money. Like, let's be real. Like, he called you a terrible mother, but you're gonna, she said, you know, she'll meet up with him, just send her the information. Hell the fuck, nah, I'm not gonna meet up with you. So then we do see Stan <laughs> when he met up with Lisa. Lisa came in that restaurant with them heels on and she was just stomping like a gladiator. I was like, um... You don't know how to walk in heels. And then you're looking at this old jacked up ass weave. I'm like, damn, the heels plus the weave, not a good combination. So then, you know, Stan is, you know, apologizing to her saying that, you know, he didn't mean what he said and he wishes he could take it back. All right. So then he says the reason why he said what he said is because, you know, I think he said he had five glasses of wine and that he was sleep deprived. I'm like, OK, blame it on alcohol, Stan. Go for it. But he tells her that he loves her. And she says, he's like, where did you stay at last night? She said, I stayed at a motel and you're going to reimburse me. He says, okay. Stan, you're stupid. Wasn't that your money to begin with that she used to get the hotel? Okay, Stan. You're getting conned and I don't really feel too bad for Stan. We're going to move on. Oh, my God. Deontay and Nicole. Where do I start with this one? Where do I start with Deontay and Nicole? So, you guys remember in the last episode, Nicole went and got her hair done. You know, she she already had dyed her hair blonde. I don't know if she got some extensions added to it or what, but she was at the salon with her friend, Audrey, right? And, you know, she's still talking to her, her ex-girlfriend, Tia. And she's, you know, inviting her to come out with them. So then Deontay comes in, picks her up. So then, you know, Deontay... Audrey and Nicole go out and then his friend Derek joins them right so Deontay tells what is his friend's name Derek to go easy on Nicole Derek don't go easy on Nicole per firmly plant your feet on her neck so Derek asks her you know what are her intentions with him she says oh you know she loves him and that you know he has nothing to worry about yeah he got a lot to worry about that you using his friend so then, you know, Audrey says, well, you know, she talked about him every day when she was in prison. So then, you know, um, Deontay notices that she keeps looking around. He's like, "Where are you? who are you looking for? She says, oh, no one. 
he says, who are you looking for? And then she says, well, Audrey, he says, who is Audrey? So then, you know, she, well, not Audrey, but Tia. My bad, you guys. So she says Tia, and then, you know, she reveals that they've had sex, and then Derek was like, oh, she used a strap on you. She says, no, she didn't use a strap on me. She went down on her. I was like, okay. We just went kind of deep with this one, didn't we? So then Deontay got pissed off, right? He's like, so, because she was talking about how many, you know, she, how many um, girlfriends she's had in prison. And he was like, so you've had, so you said, you, so you've had sex in prison, but when, you know, you got out, you told me you guys weren't allowed to have sex with each other in the prison. But that was a lie. I don't know. I mean, dude, dumb as hell. Like, how did he not know that? Anybody with common sense would know that the, anybody with common sense knows that most times in the women's prison, they're having sex with each other. But okay, right? So then Deontay say, says, but you had sex with a girl, but you won't let me touch you. She was like, well, I'm uncomfortable with having sex with you. So they went outside and they had an argument, right? She said she's uncomfortable having sex with him. Like I said, I would understand it if she was, you know, sexually assaulted, but she wasn't. So then he says, but you, you know, you got a problem, with, you know, having sex with me, but you ain't got a problem with me spending my money on you. I'm like, you got it. She don't have an issue with that. She don't have an issue with you spending money on her ass. But as far as, you know, touching her, Ms. Nicole don't want that, right? So then she tells him, well, you know, even if you didn't spend money on me, I would still want to be with you. I would still love you and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, girl, whatever. So then he asked her, to, you know, well, will you come home with me? She's like, well, you know what, I'll go home with you. And um, he, she says, but, you know, I have to think about it. If, if I'm going to sleep in the same room with you, she's lying. Just putting that to you, buddy. She's lying to you. So then they go home. This scene here got cringe e to me. So they were sitting on the couch. He told her, come, come to your man. I'm like, ugh, nasty. So then they start making out, and then he, he started begging her to, one, have sex. Then, two, he told her to sit on his face. I was like, oh, my God. No. Just cringeworthy. Just cringeworthy and embarrassing. It's secondhand embarrassment. So then he goes into his room, and then he pulled out the cold junior. Meanwhile, Nicole Senior is in her room, you know, in her bra and panties, whispering on the phone to her ex-boyfriend, Zach. I'm like, yeah, dude, you getting played. She's talking to her ex-boyfriend, Zach. She's talking to her ex-girlfriend, Tia. And she's talking to you. You getting played. You getting played, buddy. Don't really feel bad for Deontay. Let's move on. All right, you guys, next... Brittany and Ray. Brittany, 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 Brittany. So she gets a phone call from Ray. <clears throat> and Ray is letting her know that he will be coming home the next day, right? I'm still stuck on Brittany with this wig. It's just humped up and it's just really ugly. It looks like one of those Tyler Perry wigs, you know, that he always has his cast, his cast wearing. So... Ray lets us know that he will be on house arrest for two months, right? So Brittany is happy about this. You know, she's thinking that, you know, it'll be good having him in, on the house arrest. He'll be right there with me all day, every day. Like, okay, if you want to go that route, we can go that route. So then she, you know, um, she asked him, like, so when I come pick you up, is it going to be just me that's picking you up? He says, yeah, it'll just be, you know, you. So then he asked her about her family, you know, will your family be coming over? She lies to him and says, yes, that her family's coming. I'm like, no, your family is not coming. Your mama told you in the first episode that we met you that she is not ready to meet Ray. But here you are lying. Okay, it didn't make sense to me. But I mean, hey, if that's what she wants to do, let her do it. So then we see Brittany the day of to go get um, Ray from prison. Her sister is doing her makeup. I'm just still stuck on the the humpy wig is just like please do something different with that wig it's it's ugly so her sister knows what's going to happen so she, her sister knows that she's going to go pick up ray 
that Ray is going to come and stay with her, right? She's still talking about how it's a good idea to have him in the house with her. You know, um, that's, that's a woman's dream. I'm like, okay. He's on house arrest. It's not, he has no other choice or where he can go. So I don't necessarily see how that's a good thing. But I guess in her mind, she's made it a good thing. Her sister feels that he should go stay with his mom instead of staying with her, which I will agree with that. And then, you know, we see Brittany. So Brittany goes to pick him up from prison. Well, not prison, from the halfway house, right? And she notices that his grandmother pulled up. And so now she's going to go over there and try to figure out what's going on with the grandmother. I'll tell you what's going on with the grandmother. The grandmother doesn't see it for you, Miss Brittany. That's what that situation is. She does not see it for you. But um, let us move on and wrap up the episode. Actually, I've got a couple. Anissa and Jeff. Anissa, Anissa, Anissa. I'm going to be real with you guys. Anissa's getting her ass played. <clears throat> so, Jeff. You guys know Jeff is in a halfway house, right? And, you know, he calls her. He called her and let her know that he has a day pass. So, with the day pass, he, he they, as long as they know where he is, he can go there and come back, right? So, she says that she and Jeff are going to go and get him some clothes, right? So then as she's going to get Jeff from the um, the halfway house, Jeff gives her a call and tells her, you know, he's not going to be able to actually see her today. And she was like, why are you not going to be able to see me? He says, oh, because I'm supposed to get a, um, an ankle, ankle bracelet. And they told me that they don't have the time to put the ankle bracelet on me today. I'm like, if, you, if they're going to give you a release and let you go somewhere, they're going to make the time to put the ankle monitor on you to track where you are. I don't get what's going on with Anissa. Like, it, 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 it's not making sense. You know what I'm saying? So then he asked her for $100. I'm like, Anissa, you really don't see that this dude is playing you? And then he asked her to drop him some stuff off, but put it on a picnic table. I was just like, come on now. Two and two should be adding up to four, but it's actually adding up to six. Like, he can't see you. They can't put an ankle monitor on him. He needs $100. He wants you to drop something off, but you got to put it on a picnic table. And he's like, um, you know, it's, you know, she wanted some, you know, she wanted to have sex. Because she's talking about she's sexually frustrated. She hasn't had sex in six years. That sounds like a you problem. No one told you to date a crim. No one told you to date a man that was in prison for 11 years of your life. Like, that was, a, that was dumb. Come on, Anissa. Come on. Think logic. Use your brain. Use your brain. Use it, use it, use it. But now, we're going to move on and we're going to wrap up the episode. All right, you guys. And then the last couple tonight is Rachel and Doug. Doug. Called her from the first episode that Doug has a lot of issues. Number one is he has a control issue, anger issues, a slew of other ones probably. So at this point, Doug has been out of jail for two days and, you know, um, it's Father's Day weekend. So he wants to go see his father. He tells us that his father is sick, that he thinks he's on limited time at this point. But you guys know that Doug, he can during the week, he can be out up until 5 p.m. on the weekend. He can't go anywhere. So he's calling his agent and is going to voicemail. He left the agent a voicemail saying, I'm going to wherever he's from <clears throat> for the weekend. I'm like, it's not how it works, buddy. You got to get a pass from your agent to say you can go there because if you go there, you're violating your parole or probation. But Doug doesn't give a shit. <clears throat> and Rachel was trying to tell him that, like, you need to play by the rules, play it safe. But Doug said, fuck it. I'm like, OK, Doug, you might end up right back in jail. Um. Like, you might end up back in jail. So, he told little Dougie to put a timer for 30 minutes. And if not, you know, they were going to be gone. I'm like, dude. Okay. I just really feel like Doug just wants to go back to jail. The feeling they're just giving me, right? So, then, against Rachel telling him not to, she still ended up driving to see his family. I'm like, girl. And then the thing is, there are people that he can't be around. I'm like, well, that's... And then y'all are on national television. It's being recorded. That's smart. 
that's very very smart so then they do pull up to the old this old raggedy looking house that looks like it should be demolished right so then he got out of the car and he sees his dad and he says he says to him what's up you old son of a bitch <laughs> he called his dad an old son of a bitch i couldn't so we see so everyone in his family his 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 um dad his two sisters they're happy to see him so he wanted to go inside to see his mom but they were like eh she doesn't want to see you because she's just not she's still not happy with the choices that doug makes she wouldn't be happy with the choices that he's making right now knowing that he should you know he's violating the terms of his release <sighs> dumbass so um you know we see one of his sisters she's like you know i'm wondering how long he's gonna stay out of jail you and me both because i mean like i just said he's violating the terms of his release and yeah not a good look buddy you might end up right back you know in the slammer so um you know his dad he asks his dad what does he think about rachel his dad tells him he likes Rachel and he thinks Rachel is good for him and not to mess up, you know, mess it up. Only way Doug is going to mess it up is if he goes back to jail. That's it. Because like I've been saying, Rachel is Doug's meal ticket. Period. Point blank. She's a meal ticket for him. So he's not going to mess that up. So then one of um, his sisters, I think it was her name is Ashley. She was telling Doug that she found some letters that little Dougie wrote about how, you know, bad things were for him. And, you know, he's telling her, you know, no, don't let him read them. And then his other sister came up to him and she was like, you know, when you were away, she treated him like shit, right? She mistreated him. And he says, oh, no, Ashley loves him. Then, he, you know, he says, you know, she loves, she's, she's hard on him. And the, sister, the other sister's like, I would have took him, but I live with a felon. And he says, well, she's the only one that stepped up to take him. And then him and that sister got into an argument and he told her to shut the, he said, verbatim, shut the fuck up, bitch. I'm like, damn, you talk to your sister like that? Jesus Christ. Interesting. Like I say, Doug got some issues. Doug got a lot of goddamn issues, but um, that's it, you guys. Be sure to like this video. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell button and until the next week guys stay safe take care of yourselves wash your hands wear a mask or not whichever one you guys do do be blessed be safe and i'll catch you guys later bye guys